Here is the overview of the measurements you are required to complete for the season's project. Recall that seasons are predictable changes in weather patterns such as average temperatures throughout the year. These are caused by the changes in sunlight. The underlying cause of the seasons is the tilt of the Earth's axis with respect to its orbital plane as it orbits the Sun. This changes both solar elevation and number of daylight hours. Because the Earth is spherical, this causes the seasons to be opposite in the two hemispheres. As a reminder, the seasons are not caused by the change in distance from the Sun, as Earth's orbit is very nearly circular. If you need more practice with the theory, make sure to check out online simulators. Solar elevation means the angular altitude of the sun between the horizon and its position in the sky. You should not attempt to measure this directly as looking directly at the sun will cause permanent damage to your vision. Here are the steps to measure solar elevation throughout the year in an indirect way. First, you need to pick a consistent location and time of day for your measurements. This should be near noon but if your schedule is prohibitive then pick another time when throughout the week you can consistently make the measurements. Choose a location outside where the sun will be shining throughout your observation period without any overlapping shadows by other objects. The surface should be level.
make sure also that the surface type is one where you can clearly see the outline of shadows. Next, you will need to pick an object about half a meter in height that you can measure the exact height for. Next, you need to measure the length of the shadow along the ground at the time you picked for the measurement. In this demonstration, we are using a simulated sun provided by a flashlight off screen. But the measurements for the shadow should be identical. We record these measurements in our data table. You can now calculate the solar elevation angle from this, or if you have trouble doing so, then ask for help. The next measurement you will need is length of daylight. Unless you want to wake up and stay awake for each of these, it is recommended that you use an official scientific website that will calculate sunrise and sunset times for you. If you can't find your specific city, pick one nearby, but try to be as exact as possible. Make sure to pick the correct month and year you are trying to make the calculations for. Enter these measurements into your data table and then calculate the length of daylight from them. If you have trouble with the calculation, ask for help. Remember, you will need at least five good measurements spread out over time.
make sure to check out the instructions for how to enter the data for these and make the appropriate graphs.